Hello everybody and welcome to the second video in our AI jumping tutorials. In this video we're going to create our jumping behavior by again using the smart link component of Unreal's Navlink proxies. Okay, let's begin. So in our last tutorial we created a simple AI by the work to a target point in the scene. Currently they have to navigate around this obstacle in the level. So what we're going to do today is we're going to create behavior so they can jump onto and over this obstacle. We're going to start by creating our own Navlink proxy blueprint, which we will call jumping Navlink underscore BP blueprint. And we'll just jump into this blueprint to have a quick look at it. Over here on the right, you should be able to see the simple link, which has a left and right element to it. And the smart link you should be able to see now, which has a start and end position to it. It's worth noting at this point that the, there can be multiple simple links on a, on a Navlink proxy, but they can only ever be one smart link. Now let's drop our jumping nav link into the level and let's start to position it and then we'll create the behavior. So you can see here the left and the right portions of the simple link in the world. You can't see the left start and end points of the smart link. Now before we continue, we're just going to jump back into the blueprint and enable smart link is relevant in the blueprint. This will actually enable the AI to use the smart link and us to see it in the scene. So we'll just pull this over and we'll get the left portion of the simple link and drag it onto the top of the obstacle. Move it into position. Now there's two curves you can see above the link. We can see the actual link's connection is a big thick line and the thinner green parabolic curve is the actual nav link itself. Now what we're going to do is we're going to copy the left and right simple link positions and paste them into the start and end positions of our smart link. We're going to use the right portion for the start and the left for the end. Now here I just want to illustrate a bit again the smart link and the simple link are two separate things. We're just going to shift the end point of the smart link so you can see the two links diverge. Just a little bit more, we can start to see it diverging here and a lot more and we can see these two separate curves now. One simple and one smart. Now this does have an implication for us in that the AI can choose to navigate either the simple link or the smart link. So one way to avoid this would be just to remove the simple link, but I'm going to argue against that. Instead, I think you should keep the simple link, but we can change its behavior a little bit. It's got a directional setting on it, which by default is set to a bi-directional setting, i.e. both ways, so it can be navigated left to right or right to left. But if you shift this to only right to left or left to right, whichever direction is stepping down off your obstacle, then the simple link can be used to step off of the obstacle, but not onto it. And if we leave the smart link as both ways, then the AI can only jump onto it, but we can also jump off of it if they choose to. But with the simple link, they can only walk of it. So we have one method to get onto the obstacle by jumping, but two to get off of it. And this should diversify your behavior a little bit. Of course, if this isn't what you're looking for, you can just remove the simple link altogether. We're going to duplicate our link now and rotate it around so we have a method of getting off of this obstacle. And again, all the coordinates in the simple link and smart link are relative. So we don't have to reset them when we duplicate it like this, only when we want to change the starting and end positions of it. Let's do a simulation of AI here, and it will navigate to the starting point of the nav link. There's no behavior in it yet, so we can't actually jump up onto the obstacle yet. That's what we'll create in just a second. But he is navigating to the starting point, which is what we expect to see. Let's jump into the nav link blueprint and open the full blueprint graph. Now we're going to create a new node here and there's a node for when the smart link begins and it's the event receive smart link reach node. This will fire when our AI agent reaches the nav link and attempts to navigate with it. 
what we're going to do with this is we're going to calculate the velocity necessary to get our agent from the starting point to the end, and then we're going to make the character jump across that distance. But in order to do this, we're going to have to calculate the necessary velocity to do this. At this point, I want to make a quick note here that I'm not going to go into the specifics of calculating parabolic velocities and projectile motion. It's outside the scope of this video as such. I don't really want to get bogged down in it. But if you want to read more about particle motions and what the math is actually doing here, then well, I'll put some links in the comment section to some more exact sources. So we're going to begin by creating a function that we're going to call calculate velocity. And we're going to create a few inputs for it. We're going to start by creating an input of type vector that we're going to call destination location. So this is where we want it to finish. Then we'll create another vector input which we'll call starting location, where we're going to begin from. And then we're going to create another input, this time of type float, which we're going to call duration. And this is going to be how long the jump is going to last. And we're going to create an output for this of type vector, and we're going to call this velocity. We'll create a new local variable, called in duration, so we can store the duration while we're doing our calculation. We'll just connect up that in duration node, and we'll pull off the destination node, and we'll break that vector open, so we can see the x, y, z coordinates of it, and we'll do the same thing to the starting location. We'll start by taking the x portion of the destination location and we'll subtract the x portion of the starting location from that and we'll do the same with the y. So again, the destination y is having the starting location y subtracted from it. We'll then take the result of these and we'll divide them by the duration. And we'll just straighten this out so it's a little bit neater. Yeah, it's always nice to have a nice neat blueprint. But by taking the starting location in X and Y and subtracting that from the end location in X and Y and dividing that by the duration gives us the velocities necessary to get there, but only in the X and Y. It's a little bit more complicated for the Z, i.e. up axis. So we're going to start by taking a addition node. We're then going to create a multiplication node and add an extra pin to it. So we got three inputs to our multiplication node. And we're going to take the duration. And now we're going to look for a square node. We're going to square the duration and connect that to the first portion of our multiplication input. Strain it up again because, you know, it's nice to have a nice neat blueprint. We're going to multiply that square duration by negative 0.5, so negative 0.5. And we're going to finally multiply that result by gravity, the speed of gravity. Now, gravity is 9.82 meters per second squared. For 1g, but of course we're in Unreal, which deals with centimeters, so we're going to enter in here 982, so 982 centimeters. And then we'll connect the output pin from our multiplication node to the addition node, and then we'll take the z of the destination and we'll subtract the result of our addition node from that. We'll just line it all up again for neatness' sake. And now, just like with the x and y, well, we're going to divide that result by the duration. And 
and of course straighten it out as well. Now the results, like I said, of these three division nodes are the x, y, and z's of our velocities. So we'll split that struct pin and just connect these up to the x, y, and z velocity. So now we've finished creating our calculate velocity function. So we'll just compile and save the blueprint quickly. Now back in the main event graph, we'll bring in our calculate velocity function and start connecting it up. We'll connect the flow of logic from the event receive smart link, connect up the destinations, and now from the agent portion of the event receive smart link, we'll pull out the get actor location and connect that up to the starting location. So when the actor reaches there, we will use their starting point as the starting point for our parabolic calculation. We'll create a brand new variable as well, which we'll call jump duration, which will be how long our jump is going to last. We'll put in the character of jump and give it a useful tooltip too, because you're going to be able to see this from the blueprint details panel in the Unreal scene. So for each nav link, you're going to be able to control your duration of the jump. We'll give it a default value of something like two seconds, and we'll just enable that to be seen from the editor. Now we'll drag and drop that into the node graph and connect that up to duration as well. In the next portion of this, we're going to have to launch this character, but currently we can't find that because we're going to have to cast this agent actor to a character in order to be able to use that launch because launch is only part of character, not part of actor. So we'll put our actor and search for cast to character. So a little bit higher up the list on the C, there it is, cast to character. We'll drop this in and connect to the pins. We can ignore the cast failed pin because if we can't cast an actor, we don't want to do anything anyway and we'll just connect up our targets. And now we can find launch character, connect up above logic. We'll connect up the launch velocity to our out velocity as well from the calculate velocity function that we made. And we will enable override X and Y and override Z. So it doesn't matter how the character is moving when they start to you know, do the jump from the nav link, they will always end up moving in our parabolic velocity that we calculated. So let's preview this. Here's a character, jumps up, the jump lasts two seconds, and they jump off of the obstacle as well and continue on their path. Good, this is exactly what we wanted to see. To just demonstrate that the jump duration is working as well, we'll increase it to uh, something a little bit ridiculous, like 10 seconds. And now that jump is gonna last 10 seconds. So we watch my character go flying off into the skybox. There they are, way up there, and falling back down, and they should land exactly the end position, bang, right where we want them to land. So we know that the calculation is working correctly as well, which is good. I recommend doing tests like this, by the way, on almost everything. We'll just decrease that jump duration, see how low we can get it down, make it a little bit more natural. One second looks okay, but it's a bit close, so maybe we'll bring it up less than like one and a half later on. And if we pull that target location onto the obstacle, the will jump up and navigate to it just fine and off of it too. We're now going to duplicate these um, jumping nav links a little bit more. So we've got a few paths on and off this obstacle. Again, for each obstacle you create and have a path over it with a jumping nav link, suggest you put multiple ways on and off of these. So we'll put these all around the obstacle as well. Just a quick note as well, make sure your jump duration is high enough for the parabolic arc to be calculated over the edge of the obstacle. If it's too low, your character will jump into it. So you might have to test your jump durations a little bit. Let's preview this behavior again. See if we're taking a different route this time, jumping off of it from a different direction too. And I will pull this link around to the other side. I'll navigate and jump over and jump off of too. Let's make him jump the long way around as well. Here we go. So 
This is good. We got the behavior that we were trying to get from this. So we have created a jumping behavior for AI using NapLink proxies and the smart component of them. In the next video, we're going to look at how we can use NAP area classes and NAP query filters to make some more, you know, varied and diverse behavior. Thanks for watching.